Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss about ammonia metabolism, which includes formation of ammonia, transport of ammonia, and detoxification of ammonia. Now, coming to the first step of ammonia metabolism, why ammonia is formed? Now, in order to utilize any amino acid as a precursor for the synthesis of glucose fats are both glucose and fats that is glucogenic ketogenic and glucogenic and ketogenic so first step is to remove the alpha amino group in the form of ammonia then only the remaining part of the amino acid that is without amino group which is called as the carbon skeleton of amino acid can be used as a precursor for the synthesis of carbohydrates fats or both in this picture, you can see amino acids, they are obtained from two sources, one is dietary proteins and the other one is the tissue proteins. Whatever it may be, when one amino acid enters into a cell during its catabolism, the first step is alpha amino group is removed as ammonia and the remaining part that is carbon skeleton is used as a precursor for glucose fats or both. Now coming to this left part, we are concerned with this one. This alpha amino group may be used for the synthesis of some nitrogenous compounds, amino acids and biological amines. But ammonia levels are maintained very low in the blood and that is possible with urea cycle. Now coming to in detail about the removal of alpha amino group in the form of ammonia that takes place by transdeamination that is transamination and deamination. Now coming to transamination, the name itself indicates the transfer of amino group. For example, you can see alanine transaminase. The first reaction, on the left side of the reaction, you can see alanine reacts with alpha ketoglutarate. In this reaction, alanine transfers the amino group to the alpha ketoglutarate. So this is helped by the coenzyme pyridoxal phosphate. Now when it transfers the amino group, alanine is converted into pyruvate and alpha ketoglutarate is converted into glutamate. Same way aspartate transaminase, it also converts the aspartate and alpha ketoglutarate into oxaloestate and glutamate. In these two reactions, these are the most common transamination reactions. In these two reactions, the amino group is transferred from amino acid to keto acid. And these reactions are reversible reactions. Now after transamination, glutamate is formed. This glutamate enters into liver where by the action of enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase, it is subjected to oxidative deamination. Means the removal of amino group which is coupled with oxidation. So this particular enzyme has one significance that it can utilize any coenzyme either NAD or NADP and one more thing it is present only in the liver mitochondria. Now when this oxidative deamination of glutamate happens it leads to formation of alpha ketoglutarate and ammonia. So that means ammonia which is removed from the amino acid is transported in the form of glutamate and when it enters into liver mitochondria there the amino group is removed in the form of ammonia. Now coming to the transport of ammonia, before that we should know the sources of ammonia. There are two sources, one is transamination and the other one is the free ammonia. During transamination whatever ammonia which is transferred from the amino acid to alpha ketoglutarate is transported in the form of glutamate. So that is one transport form and the other transport form is glutamine and alanine. So these are transporting the free ammonia which is formed in a cell for example brain and intestinal cells. So this free ammonia if it is transported as such it may lead to neurotoxicity in order to prevent that the free ammonia or the intracellular ammonia which is released in a cell 
is transported in the form of glutamine and alanine. Coming to the formation of glutamine, as I told you, some tissues like brain they generate the free ammonia. So that free ammonia reacts with glutamate. and this reaction is catalyzed by glutamine synthetase and forms glutamine so ammonia is toxic whereas its transport form that is glutamine is a non toxic comp so in this way glutamine is formed now coming to formation of alanine alanine is transporting the ammonia from the muscles to the liver and how this is formed so during transamination of amino acids in muscle the amino group is transferred to glutamate and glutamate again can transfer its amino group to pyruvate so that it can form alanine so alanine now can transport the amino group to the liver now coming to the third step in the metabolism of ammonia that is detoxification or disposal of ammonia so first whatever ammonia that is formed in the extrahepatic tissues is carried in the form of glutamate or glutamine and alanine so now when these three reach the liver inside the liver mitochondria there are enzymes which convert or which release the ammonia from these three so first glutamate dehydrogenase acts on glutamate and converts that into alpha ketoglutarate and ammonia so ammonia is released in this reaction now glutamine it is acted upon by the enzyme called as glutaminase and it forms glutamate and ammonia and now coming to alanine by the action of alanine transaminase it forms glutamate so glutamate which is formed in the last two reaction that is reaction of glutaminase and alanine transaminase is again converted into alpha ketoglutarate and ammonia by the action of enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase so at the end of all these reactions the free ammonia is formed so this free ammonia is converted immediately into a very less toxic compound and more water soluble compound that is urea by sequence of cyclic reactions so those reactions are called as urea cycle so this is how the ammonia metabolism takes place by formation of ammonia and transport of ammonia and once it is transported to the liver its detoxification in the form of urea